want to get tatted tonight, Lisa? It's an ode to my beautiful wife, the moon and the sun. The moon and the sun. Live by the sun, love by the moon. My wife is born on a full moon. So every time I see a full moon, I always think of my wife. And I would call her the moon goddess because she's just, she's the balance of my energy, of my radiant sun. I don't, I'm not sure she's gonna like it or not. <laughs> it don't really matter to me. <laughs> just like that, we in, we in and out, man. If I had any muscles, I'd flex for you. Basketball's a game of broken rhythm. There's a lot of things that happen in the flow of the basketball game that you don't, you can't predict and you can't expect. Um, one thing you don't really ever plan for, though, is in the first five minutes of the game, you're starting four-man Williams to go down with a high ankle sprain and be out for the next six weeks. <laughs> I mean, that's that's something you just don't script. Uh, when you see him land on that foot, turn that ankle, uh, you kind of cringe a little bit, and you know this this ain't this ain't good, and he's not gonna be here. Uh, and at that moment, opportunity come and opportunity go real fast. I think a lot of players don't hear and understand that message is that as soon as opportunity comes, if you're not ready to answer that phone call, if you're not ready to ring the bell, if you're not ready to, to get on the floor and go make a play uh, and, and, not, and eliminate mistakes, then that opportunity is going to go just as fast as it came. Uh, and that was a formidable first game for us. And all of our players felt kind of what it was like to be in that moment to the program, the program's here, the season is here. You know, what's it gonna look like? Uh, and you, you beat them, they miss a last second shot to win it. You beat them by two. Uh, and so it's not the, the uh, you know, fairy tale storybook start to any season when you beat your crosstown rival, uh, division three school by two points to open up your season. Uh, they felt the emotion and the pressure of what it's like to win. And there are not gonna be many games this year where we play where we're actually expected to win. I don't know if anybody's ready in their first game of their Division One coaching career, or any players ready for that matter, well, to go into Hilton Coliseum at Iowa State uh, and say you're gonna go compete. And it was a welcome to Division One basketball type of game. Uh, being punched in the mouth like that was something when we went into that locker room, you just kind of look at your guys and you go, well, now you know what it is. So how are you going to respond? Here we go. Got it. When these rankings came out, 
I took a screenshot of that Horizon mm. League rankings. Our ass on the dead bottom. Boom. Green Bay, 11th. This is America. America loves underdogs. We are the underdog. We're the worst team coming into all of this. Uh, success is never permanent. Failure is never fatal. You know, at the same time, like, I think we got that chip on our shoulder mentality to where it's like, you know, we can really give a f if you're going to rock with us or not. If you want to, great. We appreciate it. If not, all right, watch. Any sensation there? Not bad. Keep on breathing for us. I want you to move that foot in and out again. Keep that going. Oh, look at that motion. Yeah, baby. Awesome. Keep breathing. Uh, uh. Perfect. Almost there. Keep breathing. Hey. Move. move that foot. Move it. Move it. Move, move it. it. Yep. You didn't have a prayer doing that. Three days ago. <laughs> That's wild. Rehab's supposed to be harder than playing. <laughs> Rehab's harder than playing, man. <laughs> you start to wonder. That's really brutal. Getting hurt in practice was really tough. It was exactly a week before our exhibition game for St. Norbert's. So it was actually pretty devastating. Um, it told me six weeks and I was like, I'm going to try to rehab and prehab as much as I can to get back as soon as possible. Because one of the things that we always preach in our program is response. How do you respond? Uh, there's two things you control in your life, your attitude and your effort, your actions, right, and your reactions. So how, how do you respond the right way um, when you lose? Or how do you respond the right way when you win? And that's going to be a constant cry for us, you know, battle cry for us this season is response, response, response. And can you stay kind of ahead of the curve? There it is, chicken bone gallery. <laughs> All right, so basically, you know, I started painting probably like a couple years ago. Well, one year ago, really. But uh, it's just real relaxing for me to do. I did this one out here. Uh, that was my first one out here. Just a whole bunch of random colors, little designs. All that. I'm like still a beginner, but I'm definitely getting better though. See the maps in the back, a little cardinal. And then, you know, nice just, Nice ombre effects with the with the paint brushes. I'm definitely getting better at that. Just looking my favorite one though. With the little marshmallow sitting in the hot chocolate. Basketball and painting are kind of the same. It's like it's both art. Like when you look at the you get to the bottom of like basketball, it's simple. And it's like a lot of love you can take it to, but it's real simple. Painting is real simple. Uh, the brush strokes, real. Not brush strokes. Yeah, the brush strokes, yeah. Real simple, you know. And, uh, dang, I gotta have a better response than that. I don't no, know. it's fine. I just did this one. Hold on. Last night, Kuna Matata. It means no worries. Huh? Great movie. Why ain't it great movie? Kuna Matata means no worries. Great song. Just, yeah, I gotta paint that. So, yeah. <laughs>
think people understand is young men have so much pressure on themselves to perform out here at a high level. I think everybody in that locker room, like I said, they care about each other so much that they don't want to, they wanted to win for me, they wanted to win for each other, they wanted to win for the community, they wanted to win for everybody. So to get the first one is, is special because of the people. That's what makes it all special. So I, I just, I appreciated that they didn't put any Gatorade in there and try to shower me with that and ruin this nice suit that I was wearing. I appreciate that. Ah. Oh. You know, you know what's weird? Hmm. It's like, you know, you go through this process and you recruit a whole roster. And you realize that the roster of people that you put together, two of the 13 scholarship players had multiple Division I offers, which, which makes zero sense. It makes zero sense, to be honest with you, that we have a, a team full of guys, uh, an island of castaways, who people have nobody wanted, and said that weren't good enough and couldn't do it. And uh, all, the, all, the, all the times that you hear these guys that talk about have to prove people wrong and prove people wrong, but really what they need to do is, it, we talk all the time about, you know, prove the people that believed in your right. DJ Douglas, one offer, Green Bay. Pretty damn good player. Amari, one offer, Green Bay. Mac Reckie, one offer, Green Bay. Jacob Anjak, the Canadian Crusher, one offer, Green Bay. Noah Reynolds, one offer, pretty damn good player. Ryan Wade was a walk-on turned scholarship player here. Preston Reidinger was a walk-on at Valpo, turned scholarship player here. Damn good players. It's unheard of. On a, on a Division I roster, 11 of your 13 scholarship players are basically guys that everybody said couldn't do it. Wouldn't be here. Zero stars, as Dick Bennett talks about. There's a bunch of five-star guys, five-star guys at all these different places, and. Here we are with a bunch of no-star guys. It's kind of an amazing story. If you think about it, it just it's, it's humbling. I think it's what makes us different. I think it's what gives us a chance. What's amazing is that you give some dudes a chance, you really dive into who they are as human beings, as soul of the man, you give a guy a chance. Kids are more resilient than you give them credit for. They'll always prove the people that believe in them right if you just give them a chance. That's why belief is so powerful. It's fucking, it's fucking crazy, to be honest with you. When you look at that board, just give a guy a chance, a chip in a chair, and let's go gamble. He's got, he's got two voices. He's got his normal voice, and then he's got his interview voice. His voice ain't that deep, man. He's forcing it. Coming out of high school, I wasn't recruited at all. So I missed like a portion of that in my career. Like, you know, when Coach Sundance offered me to go to Wyoming, like, I just felt, I just felt like so grateful. So like, you know, I just felt like there was really nothing I could do to pay him back. You know, he had like given me such a great opportunity and I was, I just felt like the way I was raised, uh, you know, you just, you, you pay that back to people like that. And like basketball, I feel like it's all about how hard you're gonna fight for your coach. And I didn't think I was gonna fight for anybody harder than, than Coach Wicks.
Green Bay foul, no Reynolds, that's his second. Jones. That game meant a lot to me. Playing, looking back on it now, being up nine and not being able to finish that game really hurts. Um, that's a game I was, it was circled. I really want that game back. Um, it meant a lot to me and sad we couldn't pull it out. A lot of people don't have a lot of direction anymore. Nobody has purpose. People don't even have passions anymore. They don't have passion. And what is passion? passion Passion drives your purpose. If you're passionate about something, you'll do anything to make it happen. Uh, why I love Rudy is when we were recruiting him in the recruiting process, I mean, he recruited us as much or even more than we recruited him. He knew he wanted to be a Phoenix, even from the days in his high school. It's home. Um, I remember growing up coming to Green Bay games with my dad. From the jump, from middle school to elementary school to high school, I've always wanted to be at Green Bay. You know what, it's very rare, especially in this day and age, on a team that's 362, um, for a kid to say, like, I want to be there. I want to go through that with you. I want to help you bring that back. I want to help you, for lack of better words, rise the Phoenix from the ashes. I want, I want that opportunity. While everybody else you might have to convince or talk to or maybe recruit a little bit harder to try to sell them on the opportunity, he wanted the opportunity. To that, to that point, I think one thing we're brutally honest about and overly transparent about is how hard this process is and how resilient you better be as a man, as a young man, because life is going to be a lot harder than your four years of college basketball. And um, basketball will help you reference that. You know, when you, gotta, when you gotta help somebody through a death in the family, basketball is easy compared to that. Uh, and so what we, what we pray for with our young men and what we hope that they end up learning in our program is how to be resilient. But we force tough times on them, but yet along the way, there's going to be days where you doubt yourself. You're going to have fear. You're going to have doubt. You're going to have worry. And you're going to wonder whether or not, like, you know, who am I? Who am I? But it's in those moments where you question yourself that if you respond the right way, you deepen your resolve. That's where success is right on the other side of that. If you're afraid of the ugly, if you're afraid of the hard, if you're afraid of uh, being embarrassed, then you're never going to find out what level of success you could possibly have. You're never going to find out if you have what it takes to be great. And we just know going into every game, like, nobody's intimidated by us yet because they were used to just counting us as a win and that we were a doormat. And we just knew, like, we're going to have to fight.
a trip. At the end, like, they should have won that game. How the hell did we come out of that Montana State game with a win? Got a wide open layup, and for some reason, you know, by the graces of God, it went off of the front rim and bounced out. I know, I like, I watched the video going back and I saw the guy who missed it, his teammates embraced him, um, and they just, they cared for him in that moment. They showed him that they loved him more than they loved him for that moment, if that makes sense. And last night, I watched Montana State play, and that same player hit a game winning three. I think they were down two. So it just showed me, like, you know, like, the universe returns things. Like, you, you, you get these opportunities back. And whether, you're like, you decide to seize them in that moment, I mean, that's up to you. And I don't ever want a guy to get discouraged for trying to make a play to win the game. And I think it, it hurt Noel a lot because it felt like he let the team down, but he was the reason we were in the game. Because at the end of the day, there's a lot of people out there that don't want the ball. They're cowards. End of the game, that guy could play a hell of a game all game long, but at the end of the game, they don't want the ball. I know this, Noel Reynolds wants the ball. When you ever listen to Michael Jordan talk, he talks about how many game shots, how many shots he lost, how many games he lost on the last shot. Everybody's going to remember the buzzer beaters. Everybody's going to remember the wins. Those are the ones that they like to tell stories about, the legends about. But you know who remembers the ones they miss, the turnovers they have, the shots that don't go in? The real competitors remember that, and they use that for fuel to get in the gym the next day, motivated to become better on the next play. 19 and 14 from two Colts. Take some ownership! At some point! Be a guy who says, you know what? It's on me! Here I am! It ain't happening on me! That's my challenge! This ain't an I'm angry shit. This is a like, I need more! Because if that's a 6 and 1 team in our league right now, and leading the team, leading the nation in points and fast break, if that's what that is, I ain't scared. I ain't scared. So some of you better fuck the hell up! Start sitting your ass down and fucking practice and guard somebody. Fucking practice. Guard somebody. You hear me? Do you hear me? Sir. Like, do you really hear me? Because yes, that's the challenge. The challenge is fucking practice. When you're going to make a guy better. Make a guy better in practice. Make him guard your ass instead of putting two hands on the foul. 19. 24 from the free throw line. You know, we talk about the difference between winning and losing, winning habits, losing habits. We've been a 500 team that's achieved some things early on in the season that I'd say like the community's been pretty proud of. I've been pretty proud of. Um, I didn't know where we would actually be at this point record-wise. Um, but we've already essentially won more games than they won last year. And that's to be commended. It's the tip of the cap. Um, you're supposed to you know, do better in life. You're supposed to be more. You're supposed to give more, love more, serve more. So uh, where are we? We're on to Milwaukee. And Milwaukee just happens to be the closest opponents to us right down the road, and it's, it's a heck of a rivalry. Baseball pass to Rich Fiery.
know what? Things are going to happen in the game of basketball. You're going to get crossed up. You're going to get dunked on. You're going to turn the ball over. You're going to miss a shot. You're going to airball a shot. It is gritty. It's ugly. It ain't pretty. They're giving everything they got. What's he always say? We're a champagne program on a beer budget, and it ain't, it ain't, it ain't Blue Moon or Modelo we're sipping on over here. It's 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 Bush Light, Natty Light right now, but that's fine. That's a point for us where we have to continue to push through because they don't get bored with the basics. They 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 find the mundane things, the boring things, really important. They chase the excellence. They chase the reps that are boring. They chase the things that are important to programs, which is doing the basic boring things well and having an ugly face while you're doing it. And we're not running from those dog fights. good kids, high character kids that love to compete, that want to be a part of something special. Because I, I love the shit out of our guys. And that means, the, that means the most to me. More than any win is I know we're winning off the floor too. And I know when I go home and I see my wife and my kids and I go lay my head on that pillow, my wife's gonna get mad at me because I snore too damn loud. But I'm sleeping good, man. I'm sleeping good. And you are singing your damn lungs out, man. Singing them out with an ugly ass face. Rocker! Yeah! I mean,
each other. Pretty? That ain't pretty. 